Snofford, Director of Community Relations with the Museum of Arts and Sciences. I'm back and I'm ready to bake. And in honor of National Have Coke Day, we're gonna take a look at a recipe in this classic Cooking with Coca-Cola cookbook, a classic Southern dessert, the Coca-Cola cake. But before we get into that, did you know that you can see one of the world's largest collections of Coca-Cola memorabilia at the Museum of Arts and Sciences? The Root Family Museum was established in 2001 and it features one of the largest collections of Coca-Cola memorabilia in the world. It includes everything from the evolution of the Coca-Cola vending machine to the science behind the Coca-Cola bottle. And as if that wasn't enough, the Root Museum also features an immense collection of teddy bears, quilts, Indy Series race cars, train cars, and other popular Americana. A lot of really cool things that you can see in the Root Family Museum during your next visit to the Museum of Arts and Sciences. Now, to get started with our Coca-Cola cake. First step, ingredients. These are the ingredients that you'll need to make your Coca-Cola cake. There is a second step to the process, and that's making the icing. But we'll get to that once we get the cake in the oven, and it's gonna bake for about 30 to 35 minutes. But here are the ingredients that you need to get your cake started. I'm gonna follow along from the recipe book, just so I get it correct. <laughs> two cups of unsifted flour, one cup of sugar, two sticks of butter or margarine, three tablespoons of cocoa, eight ounces or one cup of your classic Coca-Cola, one half of a cup of buttermilk, two eggs to be beaten later, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of vanilla or vanilla flavoring, and then you'll need one and a half cups of miniature marshmallows. Now the first step is to sift our flour and combine it with our sugar. And then from there, we'll have to go to the stove to combine our other ingredients. So the first part of our process is gonna be sifting our flour. You can just pour your flour into your sifter. And if you don't have a sifter, they do sell pre-sifted flour to avoid um, having to go through this process. So we're just gonna sift our flour through. And there you go. And what we'll do from there is we are going to take our sugar and we're going to combine our sugar in with our flour. The next step, we're headed over to the stove. Might have been kind of hard to see before, but there's my butter. It's melting. And once we get this butter melted, we're gonna combine the cocoa powder and the eight ounces or one cup of Coca-Cola. We'll combine these three ingredients and then we'll, we'll pour those on top of the flour and the sugar. And then we'll move on to the next step. The butter has pretty much melted. So we're gonna go ahead and combine in our cocoa powder, three tablespoons of cocoa powder, and then our eight ounces of Coca-Cola. So you wanna just kind of stir around. You wanna break up any cocoa powder bits you might find in there. And then the goal is to bring this mixture to a boil. As you can see, now our mixture is coming to a boil. You can see the change in color. It's a lot darker than it was when we first started. So now that our mixture is boiling, we're gonna take it over to our flour and sugar mixture and combine the ingredients. All right, so we have our cocoa powder, Coca-Cola and butter mixture here. We're gonna pour that over our flour and sugar. And then we're gonna mix 
and combine the two. So here we are mixing and combining those ingredients. The trick is to get all that flour kind of fine, get all the chunks out. And then we're gonna combine our other ingredients. So we're gonna combine our buttermilk, half a cup of buttermilk, the two eggs, I've beaten those, our baking soda, our vanilla. Now I'm gonna mix these up a little bit before I put the marshmallows in. Uh, the mixture is gonna be kind of thin, and then once you put those marshmallows in the mixture, the marshmallows are gonna kind of float to the top. So we'll go ahead and put in the cup and a half of marshmallows. In the meantime, I've heated my oven. Your oven's gonna be gonna need to be at a 350 degrees. And once we get this blended and put into the pan, it's gonna bake for 30 to 35 minutes. Again, your mixture is gonna be pretty thin, and those marshmallows are gonna find their way to the top of the mixture. All right, let's move on to getting it in the pan. Now that we have our marshmallows in our mixture, we're going to put them in the baking pan. Um, I recommend using more of a circular or bunt uh, baking pan. I tried this recipe in a regular sheet pan and it didn't cook very level and the icing didn't sit the way it was supposed to. So I recommend trying it in a round or a bunt style baking pan. So we're just going to pour our ingredients in our pan. Alright, and then we're just going to kind of push the marshmallows down and around because we want those to be in the cake mixture. There. I want it to be as level as possible. And there we go. All right, so you can see here our pan, and we're gonna put it in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. I forgot to mention you might want to uh, spray your pan with nonstick because the worst thing could happen is you cook your, your cake and you can't get it out of the bun or round pan. So make sure you spray it with nonstick. Okay, you can see that our butter is melting. And as the butter continues to melt, we are going to add in our Coca-Cola. So this is seven, six to seven tablespoons of coca-cola and then you can sprinkle in your cocoa powder now the idea is to bring this to a boil and you'll want to work out as much of the chunks of cocoa powder as you can now once this comes to a boil we're going to bring it over and add it to our confectioner's sugar Okay, our Coca-Cola mixture has come to a boil, so we're gonna pour this in and mix it with the confectioner's sugar. Now the process is just mixing the Coca-Cola mixture with the confectioner's sugar. And the trick is to getting all of the lumps and um, groups of the confectioner's sugar broken up as best as you can. Now once you have this mixed, you wanna mix it over, you wanna pour it over the Coca-Cola cake while the cake is still warm. So try to make the icing while the cake is in the oven. So you can pour it on top right as it comes out of the oven. The first time I tried baking this, my test run, the icing was a little too thin. 
I don't think I used enough confectioner sugar. This time I used four cups and I can already tell that the consistency of the icing is a lot better than it was. So four cups of confectioner sugar should do just fine. Okay, that looks pretty well mixed. So now we're gonna get the cake out of the oven, do our best to get it out of the pan, and then get this icing on top of that cake. It sounds like our cake is ready, so let's pull it out and test to see if it's all the way baked through. And the way that you do that is you just take a large toothpick and you're gonna place it in the middle section of the cake. If it comes out of the cake clear, then you know that it's baked all the way through. And it looks like our cake is pretty well done. So we'll go ahead and take it out of the oven and let it cool for just a little bit before we put our icing on. Okay, as you can see, our cake is baked pretty well in the pan. I have to admit I'm very nervous about this part of the process. So I'm just going to uh, put my cooling rack on one side and flip it and hope for the best. Well, this might not be the most graceful part of the video, but it might be the most entertaining. update. I was able to get the piece that didn't voluntarily come out of the cake pan. I got it in place and we'll just secure it with some extra icing. Who doesn't like more icing anyway, right? All right, let's pour the icing on. Okay, here we go with our icing. No one will ever know that that piece did not come out of the pan by its own self. And the recipe does uh, call for pecans as an optional topping to your cake. I don't always like to add pecans, but I think I will for this just because it is called for in the recipe. So I'll go ahead and chop up some pecans. Even though we can tell where that piece uh, that didn't want to come out is, we can just turn that one to the back and we'll take our pecans and just do a little sprinkle over the top. I should have put the pecans on before the toppening hardened, but that's okay because I don't really like a lot of pecans on mine anyway just a little extra flavor. All right, and there you have it. I think we're pretty much done. Just gonna let it cool just a little bit longer. Even with the part of the cake not wanting to come out of the pan, we survived and we have a beautiful product here. 
The Coca-Cola cake, straight from the recipe book uh, that you can find in our store, Classic Cooking with Coca-Cola. Um, I hope that you enjoyed today's baking tutorial. If you baked along with me or saved the video to bake later, be sure to tag us at Moaz Daytona so we can see how yours turned out. Thank you so much for watching and continuing to support Moaz and happy National Coke Day!